have now formed identities around the ant they have. It's pretty wild. And boy, do they ever get easily upset. <laughs> no, you need to fix that. You need to fix that. But we got something real special for you. I, it's a brand new segment. Morning, everybody. It should be Friday, April the 12th when this video releases. Apologies if I get the date wrong or something like that. Anyway, just trying to get a few of these done before I take off on a very long trip. I'm going to have some details on that next week. I think you guys are going to like it. And hopefully I'll get a chance to meet a few of you guys along the way. All right, before we jump into your comments and questions, what am I reading? Still going through Andrew Huang's book, Make Your Own Rules, almost finished up. Pretty good stuff, that's for sure, especially if you're interested in doing any kind of content creation for a living. It's a pretty good read. Uh, still going through Shogun, and Three Body Problem is on my want to watch list. I don't know if anybody's seen that yet. I don't know if it's any good. Fingers crossed. Um, I did check out Foundation and kind of fell asleep halfway during the first episode. So uh, not off to a good start there. Anyway, let's get your comments and questions right now. Glenn's the only person people get mad at for doing glorms of work and saving us money LMAO. Well, that's the problem. People are very proud of their purchases. And when you get some asshole comes along and says, hey, you might not need that. You might be able to do the same thing with this other thing. Uh, te people tend to get really upset about that thing because, you know, they work very hard at what they do to be able to afford these very expensive guitar amps and that kind of thing. So I can under, I can certainly understand from a pride perspective how that might be upsetting. But the great thing is if you haven't spent your money on that shit yet and you watch a few videos and you do a little bit of homework, you can begin to form your own opinion and maybe make your purchases based on your goals rather than buying a status piece. At least that's the idea behind this show. Hopefully I'll be some help to some of you guys out there anyway. And those of you guys who are mad at me, eh, you'll get over it. I hear folks talk about the lack of humanity makes music stale, but then the moment they hear real human performances in music, they hate that humanity. Oh, isn't that the truth? I, th I think we, we've come so far with the sanitized artificial performances that we don't even know what to make of a real performance anymore. At least maybe the younger generation. I can hear some cool stuff come up on my mix review show on Mondays and I'll hear stuff that's not quite perfect. I'm like, good, let's, let's have more of that. Whereas, you know, uh, a lot of the online forum group think people are, no, you need to fix that. You need to fix that. And for the record, no, no, we don't. We need to understand what art is and paint by numbers has always sucked. And now we're doing paint by numbers, except in music. And it's just fucking awful. Remember guys, art, isn't supposed to be perfect. And that is the goal here. We are trying to make art of some kind. Never lose sight of that. Glenn, will you consider making your own guitar speaker? I would definitely buy it. Dude, that's a tough one. I don't know. I should probably reach out to a couple of different manufacturers and see if they'd be interested in doing like at least a special edition or something like that. I, I would love to do like a custom Mojo Tone speaker or something like that. I think that'd be really fucking cool. I know they've done some short runs on certain things because I've asked them like, hey, do you guys have any more? No, those are long gone. Fuck. I mean, like, Maybe I, I could definitely float the idea out there and see what's happening. Hey, if anybody knows some speaker builders who might be interested in doing a signature speaker, uh, that might be really fucking cool. But I'm not sure if anybody can actually build the speaker I really want to make. That remains to be seen. I'll keep you guys posted if, if there's any developments on that front. Would be an awful lot of fun, though. Man, it took me almost 25 plus years and probably about $75,000 to figure out that the speaker has the biggest influence on shaping your guitar sound by far. At least in my opinion, in the way that is not available by amp choice or mic choice placement, etc. But the main takeaway for me is this. Experiment with everything so you know what every puzzle piece does to your sound. I mean, picks, cables, string gauge, string height, pickups, pedals, amps, speakers, mics, and sometimes guitarists. I'm not going to argue with any of that. I highly recommend experimenting with a bunch of different stuff. The only thing I would say is to give yourself a better notion of what's really going on. Get yourself a reamp box so you've at least got a constant and can make A B comparisons. I mean, like, that's where all this stuff really started for me. I mean, like, for the longest time in the mid 2000s, like from about 2005 to about 2008, 2009, I just sit in here for like eight hours a day and reamp a bunch of stuff and try and put the pieces together and figure out why I wasn't getting the sounds I wanted. And after much, much, much failure, I finally came to the same conclusion. It really does boil down to the speaker. Now you don't have to believe me. The great thing is reamp boxes are not that expensive and you can do your experiments yourself. And I highly encourage everybody watching the show to start doing experiments. Just be sure to eliminate as many variables as possible. Because if you play the same piece on a different amp twice differently, you're going to skew your results and not be able to make a determination based on just the one thing you're trying to evaluate. It never ceases to amaze me how many guitar players clutch their pearls when you dare suggest spending money on a reamp box. The one thing that will actually help them achieve their goals. 
Dude, there's a saying to people who won't listen, and it's don't throw your pearls to swine. I'm grateful to have snapped out of the brainwashing that everything affects the tone from the nut to the pickups to the tone wood and everything else they have to sell us. You proved that what really affects tone is the speaker cap. You saved me and all who listen thousands of dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate the kind words, and that is my goal here, ultimately, is to help you guys avoid making the mistakes I did. Hey guys, real quick, this episode's brought to you by 70,000 Tons of Metal, the world's biggest and best heavy metal cruise. Now, if you're into metal and you want to get over the mid-winter blahs, get yourself some sun and have the most fun you're ever going to have with your clothes on, this is the event to be part of. From January 30th to February 3rd, 2025, 70,000 Tons of Metal is going to sail from Miami to Ocho Rios, Jamaica, with nonstop metal playing the whole time. Now, I've been doing this since 2019, and it's a blast. There's just so much to do. You can see as many shows as you like. Sit in the sun, do an excursion, work out in the gym. Hell, just sit in a hot tub if you like. And there's all kinds of special events as well. Meet and greets with the artists, musician workshops, all night metal karaoke, and of course, the belly flop contest. The food's great, the music's great, and most importantly, the people are amazing. This year, there were over 60 bands, including Blind Guardian, Angra, Cataclysm, The Halo Effect, and even Tigers of Pantang for old bastards like me. This is the metal event of the year, and I can't wait to do it again in 2025. You can check it out at 70,000tons.com, and I hope to see you on board next year. Okay, guys, no butthurt of the week, but we got something real special for you. It's a brand new segment. Here we go. It's a conspiracy! Whenever things don't go your way, remember, it's never your fault. It's a conspiracy. President assassinated? Religious nut jobs fly airliners into buildings? Global pandemic? The guy you voted for didn't get elected? It's all a conspiracy! When life gives you lemons, find the source, find the red flag, because it's far easier than dealing with reality. We got a real interesting one here from Damien's Regicide. Check this out. Friend said, that's clickbait, and Glenn drew all the charts to prove himself right. He's lying. Can we see under the hood a little more? Yeah, Damien, I'm sure that was your friend who said that and not you. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Well, thankfully, you know, your, your friend is a super sleuth and saw right through my bullshit, uh, except he failed to acknowledge one very fundamental thing. I have zero drawing skills at all. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay, that's Damien's friend right there. I don't know if you can see that. He's got he's he's not smiling. His his lips are face down. That's about the extent of my artistic capabilities. So if I were to actually draw all of those frequency response curves that I took, uh, that would not allow me any time to put out any fucking content at all. It would take me months to do that. Is your friend out of his fucking mind? How thick could you get? Damien, could you please tell your friend to unstick his head from his ass? It's not a fucking conspiracy. All you have to do is go get a copy of Room EQ Wizard and do a few tests for yourself. It's literally a free fucking download. Look, I understand your friend is really uncomfortable with my findings. I highly encourage that he does his own test. It's not that fucking difficult. The only problem is you can't be lazy. You actually have to do the work. But thanks again to Damien's friend for bringing this up. Remember guys, when things don't go your way, it's always a conspiracy. They're watching us right now. Buyer's remorse, bias, indoctrination, and herd mentality is a thing. If someone spent a ton of money on an amp, a lot of influential people like artists and big YouTube influencers swear by, then he easily turns a naked emperor that will die on that hill, professing how resplendent his new clothes are despite being buck naked. Just look at wine. That's another other bullcrap market when you get into higher, mid, and top tier where no mortal man can tell any meaningful difference in taste, whilst others swear they taste a rich body with vanilla tones with hints of strawberry. Odds are that if your tone sucks, the problem is you, but that does not provide an easy fix that you can just dump cash to and go away. Wow, man, lots to unpack in that comment. Uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna say thank you for the whole wine tasting thing. Uh, if you ever saw this show, Penn and Teller bullshit, they take on the whole wine snob thing. It is absolutely hysterical what those guys did. Uh, highly recommend it. Actually, Penn and Teller bullshit was a big inspiration for this show because I'd always watch it every week and said, why don't they ever do one on the music business? So I, I made my own. Big fan of Pound and Taller, also a big fan of James Randi and his work debunking Uri Geller, and that was really great stuff. If you don't know what that is, just do a little search. It's very entertaining, that's for sure. Now, your end quote there said something along the lines of, uh, if your tone sucks, the problem is you. Uh, well, if you can't play, 
Uh, the problem is you, but if your tone sucks, there's actually a really easy fix and that's just buy a couple of better speakers. You'll get far better results. The thing that blows my mind is I, I just don't understand why guitar players get their backs up so much about this kind of thing. It's not like I'm asking them to drop a lot of money. A Mototone BV30H, one of my favorite speakers right now, is 129 bucks. That's like half the price of a fucking pedal. Fuck, guys. The solution is simple. You just got to be willing to try it. I build guitar amps, tube amps. Speakers are a really important choice. The preamp circuit is also a big deal. If you want to change your sound, I'd agree. Try speakers first. Thanks, Dead Kobe. Appreciate it. Dear Uncle Glenn, following your advice, and primarily because I want to see for myself what the big deal is with all this, two bands. I got myself a 6505 plus combo and never regret it. Much to my horror, I realized the local store manager of the second biggest music retail at Magic Guitar Center, but much, much smaller, simply could not comprehend the difference between instrument cables and amp disc cab cables, aka speaker cables. Because A, they look the same, and B, he used the instrument cable in place of a speaker cable. Nothing bad happened, according to him. So he was trying to convince me that a good instrument cable would be suitable to connect the 6505 to a load box. I also realized a good friend of mine and seasoned guitar player also didn't have a clue about the subject. So could you please consider making a not very fun but informative video about TR, TRS, an XLR speaker, an instrument, and balanced and unbalanced cables. I had to take a crash course, uh, all these to make sure I won't fry my 6505 plus combo when connecting it to a load box and my katana with the cab. To be fair, not too many amp heads are sold these days for obvious reasons, so the ignorance can be justified to the extent, but not for the people that it's their job to know better. <sighs> Fuck sakes, man, get to the point. I've been following the channel for eight years now, and I'm grateful for the free, unbiased advice and the element base I got a month ago, plus freebies uh, from you give from time to time. All the best from Greece. It's actually not a half bad episode suggestion. I might look into that in the future, but here's a spoiler, guys. Yes, instrument cables are different from speaker cables. And the great thing about speaker cables is you don't have to spend a lot of money. All you got to do is know how to use a solder iron and go buy some lamp cord down at Home Depot and save yourself a fucking fortune. Recently changed my power tubes and really thought I was hearing a difference in the low end. Turns out I just lowered the EQ knobs before I took the thing apart. Funny how often that happens. Could you do a video on cheaper amps? Personally, my experience is that with cheaper amps, there's a bigger difference, and I think that's where the misconception comes from because the difference between a $200 and a $700 amp is usually pretty noticeable, so it would be cool to see a direct comparison. That's a great suggestion. I don't know how fucking true that is, honestly. Usually what happens is the $200 to $700 amp uh, the $700 amp usually gets the way better speaker. I chewed out the Blackstar guys last summer because they were releasing a new tube amp and I'm like, that's great. And they were putting like Celestian 7080s in there. And I'm like, guys, what the fuck are you thinking? You just spent all this money building this amazing amp and you're basically putting the shittiest possible speaker in with it. Of course, people, it's not going to fucking sell because it's not going to sound good. Ugh. But I will look that up. I've got my eye on a couple of different pieces. I'm actually in the market right now for a PV Valve King head. I don't know if anybody in the Windsor area wants to let me borrow theirs, but uh, I would definitely be interested in checking that out and running it up against a Soldano in a blind test because I think that would be all kinds of fun, <laughs> especially for the Soldano owners. I'd love for, to have you take a look at Remaster Records. There are loads of records that I used to love, but sound terrible even on high bitrate streaming services that they say are streaming lossless. I copied a bunch of my old CDs to AUG files and they sounded great. When I hear a lot of those tunes that have been remastered, they just seem to have had the life sucked out of them. I don't have any magic ears and have no idea what they've done uh, there about the old records, but it just seems to have been murdered. Dude, I'm going to look into it. I was going to do it, and um, a friend of the show, a longtime fan, the Helm of the Anti-Lemon, uh, he said he tried doing some stuff on his YouTube channel, and he just got immediately copyright claimed. His videos got taken down. So I need to do a little homework on the legal aspect of things before I can start doing it. It seems really fucked, you know, because there's a lot of film critics on on uh, YouTube. I mean, like, you ever watch The Critical Drinker? He's hilarious. He's fucking great. He runs movie clips all the time. No copyright issues. But the minute you grab a piece of music to editorialize on, you immediately get copyright claimed. It's like, there's a big disparity going there. So I need to enroll in Legal Eagles copyright class and uh, do a little bit of homework there before I can do the mastering episode. But that's something I really want to do, take a look at because I think it'd be worthwhile taking a look and seeing if there is any benefit to the remasters or not. Spoiler, probably not. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a real fun episode. But unfortunately, I am going to have to put a little bit of time into that one before I can actually shoot it. So it's coming. Just bear with me. Might be a while yet. I am going on a pretty long trip though, so maybe I will grab that course and it'll give me something to do on the plane rides. Yeah, that might be interesting. We'll see. Have you considered the testing the common understanding on a brand new versus broken in speakers? I hear lots of folks talk about how an older speaker of the same model will sound more open because it's broken in, man. 
I think Christian Cola did a video on this and there might've been a very slight change. It's something I wanna do as well. I need to probably get an ISO box, just set it up so I can have a sound going through a speaker for about, you know, 48 hours or 72 hours or something like that at top volume and not drive myself fucking insane. That's the thing it's possible to do. It's just not very convenient at the moment, but I don't think there's been much definitive work done on the subject. A lot of it is just, you know, guitar players making assumptions because that never happens. If you max out high gain amps, they do indeed not sound very different. Running all these different amps here on YouTube through a zillion interfaces and effects, you can never get an honest listening experience. But to me, a Klon doesn't really sound different from any other distortion pedal. I try to avoid pedals at any cost. I do agree that speakers make a difference, but a lot of vintage amps just sound good and only have a handful will sound special. Some amps just have that extra touch of magic. At home, I do not mic my speaker cabs for practice or at rehearsal. So the only situation you're confronted with micing speaker cabs is live or in the studio, which you can always correct and find the best sounding spot. Yeah, it's almost like the show is called Spectre Sound Studios or something weird like that. I do have one qu question here. Uh, only a handful will sound special. Some amps just have that extra touch of magic. Interesting. Can you tell us what units we're supposed to measure the magic in? Glenn, I've been watching your videos for a while, and I got honestly, the content has made a great difference in my recording. I have a PV5150 combo that came with the original speakers, which sounded pretty good in the room. However, when I would go to record, no matter where I put the SN57, it still sounded like shit. Go figure. I took your advice and swapped out the speakers with a G12M65 and a V30, and I can honestly say it's a night and day difference. Not only does it sound better in the room, but the recordings actually came out usable and sound great. Thank you for making the content you do, and thank you for being so expressive during the videos. Lol. Hey, Alessandro, so happy I could be helpful. You know, that really does make my day when I get comments from you guys saying, hey, I tried your suggestion, I changed my speaker. And wow, it magically sounds so much better. See what I use there, magic? Yes, we can measure magic. It's measured in speaker types. You guys have an amazing weekend. And remember, when you hit that red record button, do the absolute best you can. I'll see you next time. What's the fucking date this is supposed to be out? Son of a bitch. And we are, remember guys, it really depends to be really, that, that's it. That's my, that's my sole motive. Oh, okay. Got, yeah, we got it. Hell, they're probably cheaper than, actually, what, what's the fucking speaker go for these days?